Okay, so uh, we're gonna look at the idea of neck articulation under load. When the dog, we're gonna have an imitation dog here because I wanna be able to, to work through it slowly and show you. When they make the bite like this, on the spine, if you pull straight, like if they pull straight back and I pull straight back, it's a, it's a load on this, but that's okay. The body can handle, they're, they're designed to bite and hold. So the body can handle, I don't wanna look at the screen, the body can handle uh, the idea of load through the bite delivered through the length of the spine. That's not the problem. The problem comes when the problem comes when you go articulation under load, right? So like if I pull and turn is when there's going to be a crimp in the neck. Like if that's the neck, this is the mouth, that's the spine. If this is the neck, that's where it's going to happen. So I can pull the dog. You'll see people swing the dog in a circle, but if you watch the wrist, when I swing them, the wrist stayed straight the whole time. So I can pull up and down and side to side, and the wrist or the neck never articulates. It's not this, 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 and this, because that's where the, the it's gonna cause problems. So it means when I'm working with a dog, I have to watch their neck. So if they hit the tug, and they're driving into me, I have to pull in a way that doesn't articulate the neck. So that's my skill as a decoy, or my skill as a person working a tug, to be able to accept that kind of traction, and that kind of force without fucking their neck up. Because it's real easy as they hit the turn to go like this and then stop short and their neck goes sideways like that. So a tug is actually more dangerous than a spring pull because I, have to constantly make little adjustments to make sure that I'm coming straight out of the spine and I'm not getting articulation under load. Based on that video that you were just looking at, you can see like articulation under load is the danger, right? So the thing that happens is this. Uh, when a spring pole is set very high, I'm getting that so I to adjust. When a spring pole is set very high, I jump up, I grab, and I can't really articulate much one way or the other because the height of this, right? So no matter where I go or how I pull, there's minimal articulation under load, right? So the height of the spring pull is what makes the line of pull be in line with their spine. Because if I have to get vertical to make the grab, then my spine, just by the essence of standing on my back legs, is in line with the direction of the pull. What happens is people want to make it safer so they lower the spring pole, and now the back of the dog is at right angles with the angle of the toy. So when they grab, they have the ability, if they push this way really hard, sorry, if they push this way really hard and then it stops short, they have the ability to make that same neck crimp that we made over there with a bad decoy catch, right? So they can get here, they can thrash from side to side, put a lot of pressure, and as they move, Rain sideways, the bungee pulls them back this way. So it's a lot of articulation on the neck under load. That's what causes the danger. So the reason a spring pull is not dangerous or not as dangerous is literally it's the safest of all the prolonged contact bite play that you can do. Tug, decoy, it doesn't matter. If it's high enough that the dog has to get vertical to get it, it keeps the articulation on the spine under load at a minimum. So if you have a dog that you can't set the toy high, because a lot of dogs won't leap off the ground to grab a toy, they're not there yet. If you have a dog that is, is not able to hit a hanging toy, and you have that right angle thing, because we just said, if I'm a decoy, I can help the dog not get hurt. Or if I'm working a tug, I can help the dog not get hurt. But on a spring pull, they're kind of on their own. So if you have to set the toy low for safety, what I gotta do is make a line, don't have one, I can attach a leash to the toy, so I can make it dance a little bit, put a little prey into it, and interest them in it. And when they grab, I can pull forward, make the line of pull be towards me, like uh, parallel to the ground instead of at right angles. Because if this is the line of pull, and this is the line of their spine, we have the issue of articulation, right? So either put a line on and help them, or hang it high enough that it makes vertical. But the point of this video wasn't to go, oh, how to make this less dangerous. The point was people see a spring pole and go, ooh, that's bad. I'm going to do the safe thing and just play tough. A properly set spring pole is 
the safest bike lane you can do with your dog for them that because of the direction of the pole in relation to the spine and lacking articulation 